Good day, traders. Hope you guys are good. And welcome to this week's segment of our weekly market breakdowns. So without wasting any time, let's get straight into it. I want to start by looking at AUD USD um, on the monthly. So as you can see here on the monthly, we have a fair value gap here. And then we have gaps here, gaps here, gaps here. So that's my trading process. Most of you know it by now. Right, so I first look at where the gaps are and I then look at the sources of those gaps and then draw out uh, my levels of demand or supply. So if you're looking at this area right here, this would be the source of um, this fair value gap right here, making it a demand zone, right? And then um, my other zone would be here, and then the final one would be here. All right, so now that I've identified my areas of demand and supply, let's look at other things like the trend, right? We are currently in an uptrend and the correction phase of that uptrend, right? If you look at how price has been moving, especially uh, in this region right here, it has a corrective nature to it, right? On top of that, we have areas where, for example, right here, we've broken an internal structure, right? And we've broken opposing levels. So even this area of demand has been confirmed, right? And then we also have this gap right here and we've tapped into some of the orders with this, um, what do you call this? With this spike right here. So previously, I think I was expecting the market to go all the way to this level right here before going up. But it looks like the market uh, is not planning on going lower, right? There is a possibility that price will go lower to this point right here, tap out um, some orders before going up. But from the way I look at it, I think price is ready to go up. So before we move on to lower time frames, I just want to get some things clear. We're in a corrective phase of an uptrend. So if that has been said, it means that we are only looking for opportunities to buy. Okay, let's move on to the lower time frames. Okay, so if we move on to the weekly, this is the monthly supply that we've identified. And then this is the source of this great imbalance that you see over here. And like I said, when we were looking at it on the monthly, I was expecting price to at least tap into this area right here as it is the one with the highest probability given the fact that it's nested within a higher time frame zone, right? So we had also the zone right here, which isn't, um, a good area to be trading from if we look at the rules that we use to grade the strength of a zone, right? <clears throat> One of the obvious things that you'll notice about this zone right here is the fact that it has a lot of candlesticks on it, number one, and number two, it doesn't have a strong departure. So that's why I wasn't really expecting price to, 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 to react in a positive way from it. But nonetheless, we have this zone and we have it in control. Right, we took liquidity from these equal lows right here, and then went into an institutional level. And this that's why I think the market had incentive to react from it because retail traders uh, had the orders right here, and we took or not we, but market makers took out their stop losses. And to those who wanted to sell the retest prices is 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 pushing towards the upside. So now that a, a, a higher time frame zone is in control. What are we looking for on the daily? A change of sentiment, right? Uh, before we move on to the daily, uh, if this actually pans out exactly how we want it to, uh, where are we going to take profit? I'm going to take profit at this opposing area of supply, right? I know I mentioned the fact that uh, I'm still expecting price to go up, but there's a possibility that price might go into this area play around and then still consolidate before going up. So you don't wanna take those kind of chances, right? 
And if you don't get that change of sentiment, I'm still expecting price to go all the way to this level right here. So I haven't ruled that one out yet. But if price breaks this entire structure, that's a conversation that we're gonna have uh, during that week. But for now, I'm looking for buys on similar time frame. Let's go to the daily and see what's happening. All right. On the daily, we have this Fairvalley gap over here. So we have an imbalance here. So if price was to go up, the, the incentive comes from the orders that were left here that were not filled. And then we have that source of the imbalance, which is the nested uh, daily supply. Don't necessarily think it's a good area to be trading from, but that's a conversation that I said that we're gonna have when that happens. So we have a strong rejection right here, right? Meaning that there's some form of liquidity over here, right? We're looking for a change of sentiment. Okay, if we look at internal structures, which you'll see on the four hour, you'll see that here there was a high, right? A swing high, which got broken into, and then price started changing or shifting sentiment. Uh, I believe that price tapped into a daily zone, yeah. So if you zoom out, you'll see that price tapped into the zone over here, right? So in some saying, you see that change in sentiment, right? You have this high that's been taken out here, and then a change of character right here, a mitigated zone, break of structure, and then price is making its way to the upside. So as you can see on the four hour, this shift or this change in sentiment is much more clear. Like you, you can really see that price up is changing sentiment. What I don't like about this change of sentiment, I think is just the way in which it's moving. So usually with impulsive movements, you, you expect uh, price to to get from point A to boy to point B in the shortest time possible, meaning with um, with strong candlesticks, candlesticks like these ones right here, right. If you compare how price moved from here to here, it took more candlesticks to move from here to here than from here to here. So that's what I was expecting. That clear change of sentiment, but I guess that's what we're getting, right? We also have equal highs over here. We also have this imbalance over here. And then the source of imbalance also, like I said, on the daily, it was an area of liquidity. So what is my plan of action? I'm planning to take this trade, but I'm expecting it to be a high risk trade because I do not like how it's going to the upside. Also, um, if that does not work out, I am planning to sell because uh, if we don't get strong pu pushes towards the outside, it means that the market is planning to correct and then move towards the downside, right? If we broke through the slow right here, if we broke through the slow right here, I'd believe that we are selling. So it's two scenarios. The first scenario, is us getting a strong uh, movement towards the upside. And then the second scenario is us breaking through this low and retesting it and moving towards the downside to, to retest that nested weekly demand, right? Because of how this thing is moving. These are my sentiments on AUD, USD. Let's move on to another pair. Right, another pair that I want us to look at is GBP and ZD. So on GBP and ZD, we previously had this movement right here. And from that movement, I was expecting buys. Okay, let me do this. I was expecting buys up until this level, right? But then as the weeks, or yeah, as the weeks went by, I saw how price is moving towards this upside. And I saw how slowly it's moving towards the upside which led me to think that maybe price is just correcting and uh, we are about to expect a drop towards the downside. 
So that's when my sentiments kind of changed. I could be wrong, but yeah, that's what I'm expecting. I drop towards this level. So I'm assuming that this was just an impulsive movement. This was a correction. And then um, we're going to get dropped towards the downside. What am I using to add up this thing? Uh, the fibs. So if we look right here, price just tapped into our 50% fib. So that's point number one. Point number two, we have filled almost half of the orders that were resting from this fair value gap over here, right? So we don't have to fill in all of the orders, but the fact that we filled in some for me kind of gives me the idea that maybe price took all the liquidity that it wanted to take out and that we're going to drop towards the downside. If you're looking on the daily, all right, if we're looking at the daily, we had this fair value gap right here. The source of the fair value gap, which is our demand zone, I mean, our supply zone, right? The source of that fair value gap. And then if you look above it, that's another thing. If you look above it here, the market is kind of balanced. We don't have an unfilled order here. It might look like we have unfilled orders on the, on the, on the weekly, but if you look at the daily, we don't have any unfilled orders. And if you look at the daily, another thing, this sort of like looks like, okay, price lift, a footprint with a huge imbalance. And now we're having this induction in the form of an uptrend that's leading up to this level. And if this level is in control, meaning we're gonna get, get, a, get a change of character and after getting a change of character, then price is expected to move towards the downside. So this whole movement towards the upside for me looks like an induction, right? looks like an induction, could be wrong guys. So for me, if, if, if I'm wrong, I would like to see a break of, I mean, a breakout of the zone entirely. I don't want it to be con in control. If you don't get the breakout, I still believe that price could drop. So what am I waiting for, for confirmation? I'm looking for a change of sentiment, which means a change of internal structures and where am I gonna take profit on this area? of liquidity. Let's go to the four hour. So if you look at the four hour, price has been stuck. Here it will be a break of structure. Then a breakout from this area right here will be a change of character because it's a breakout of internal structure. So I'm waiting for the market to break both of these levels. And if you get a breakout of both of these levels, I'm also expecting um, a retracement to just and, that, uh, and then we're gonna get a drop towards the downside, right? Uh, so somewhere here, yes, I was entering at resistance, putting my stop loss here, and then I take profit here, which give, will give me close to a one to five. Yeah, so that's that's what I was thinking. But yeah, you you can take the more conservative approach of waiting for confirmation. But yeah. These are my sentiments on GBP and ZD. All right. Uh, we're going to look at Euro and ZD, and I want us to start on the monthly. So on the monthly, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but we are in a long, long-term downtrend, right? If you can zoom out, you can see that this has a very impulsive nature. And now we're just in a corrective sort of like pattern, right? So for this corrective pattern, this is our range. Our most significant high on the monthly has been this high over here. And our most significant low has been right here. So if we look at that, then it means that we are in sort of like the 50% region. Um, if, if you zoom in, you'll see, and I think I'd like to believe it will be more clear on the lower time frames. You'll see that we had a break of structure over here and then a retest to this. So if we, even if you look at the supply, it's confirmed because it has broken through previous structure. It also broken through an opposing supply, had a strong departure, had a consolidation away, and also this level right here to retest it. So that's why I said this might be a valid area of supply, right? With this area of supply, um, I'm expecting a drop 
and where am I going to be taking profits? Where am I going to be taking profits on this opposing level of demand? So yeah, if that does not work out, uh, I also believe that we have liquidity right here. A bit of unfair, unfilled orders here and this not so good looking area of supply. Right, so yeah, for now, I am looking for sales, right? Also because we've been breaking structures, breaking lows, creating new lower highs, breaking lows, creating lower lows, right? So we are on a downtrend. Like I said, it will be much more clear on the weekly. So let's do exactly that and move on to the weekly. So like I said, on the weekly, you're going to see a clear break of structure. And then this is our fair value gap, the source of the fair value gap, which is our supply. As you can see right now, the market is reacting from that supply or from that, yeah, from that source of that fair value gap. And last week it has rejected, right? The only problem with the rejection, in my opinion, is the fact that we haven't broken through the low of the previous week. So I was expecting for the market to at least break below that area. So that's the level on the smaller time frames that I'd expect the market to break out of, right? Even if we don't get a breakout below that level, we still have this sort of like confirmed supply right here where price can still react from. So that's what I'm expecting. And if we get that confirmation, this will be my first take profit. My second take profit will be on this level right here. So let's go to the daily and see if we have a valid opportunity, right? So I drew this prior to me recording this. So as you can see, we also have a supply region, which is nested within the higher time frames. Yes. And then we had this induction. So how do you identify an induction? If you have a counter trend movement, right? So a new trend emerging, but the strength of the trend is not significant compared to the trend that was before it, right? And if you have a strong fair value gap and the market wanting to retest that fair value gap or the source of that fair value gap, if you see those two, three things, then it's probably a sign for you to look out for um, the sell. So what I'm expecting right here is a breakout below this level. And this will constitute as a break of internal structure, right? If you get that break of internal structure, then uh, that's my confirmation. But like how I'm trading on GP and ZD, I'm gonna take the risky approach, which is me uh, trading before getting confirmation, right? So my first take profit will be here. Then, yeah, my second take profit will be here. So that's what I think will happen on Euro NZD, right? Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll send signals to the VIP group. So if you want to get exclusive signals, especially with analysis and parameters, make sure that you contact me uh, on Telegram using the link in the description box below. So yeah, that's what I had to say with regards to Euro NZD. Let's move on to GBP USD. So as you can see, this is a huge movement that we anticipated. Unfortunately, we weren't able to catch it because I was expecting prices to go at least on this level, but that didn't happen. And yeah, anyways, anyways, let's focus on what we have right now. Uh, what we have is price reactive from this weak demand zone, right? Uh, and then showing signs of wanting to go to the upside. Uh, we have a fair value gap right here, right? Which creates incentive for the markets to go up because they would wanna fill, market makers would wanna fill up orders that they left from this initial drop, right? In my other videos, I explain the whole science behind these zones. And uh, if you still haven't watched those videos, the links to those videos will be in my description box. So you can just check them out on the channel page, right? So that's what I'm expecting right now. A mini induction going towards the upside to fill up these orders. 
and then maybe a drop to continue with the downtrend. But like I said, still a long way to move. I think we have about 300 pips, 480 pips to move towards the upside. So we can still capitalize on that. Although it's a counter trend movement, meaning it's a low probability trade, but we can take the risk, right? If you zoom in, you'll see that um, we had a change of structure with this breakout right here. We came back and took out unmitigated zones. So this was a clear breaker zone. <clears throat> if you check out my videos on ICT mitigation and breakers, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about, right? And then we had this change of sentiment right here. Kind of looks like this. Right, and now it seems like price is trying to push all the way to the upside. There's this area of liquidity. If you're a retail trader, there's a high possibility that you, you've mapped out your, what you call this, resistance on this level right here, on this level right here, and you're waiting to sell. And for institutions, that's liquidity, that's potential money, right? If you look at my liquidity video, I teach you guys how why liquidity zones are significant so clearly there's incentive for us to go towards the upside and fill up some of these orders that were left right here if you hear dog barking outside please don't mind that right uh they fit so how am i going to treat this pair um we have this break of structure over here clear break of structure right clear break of structure and then we came back and took out uh, this four hour zone right in we're now in the ending phase of that critical so my stop loss will be below this zone right here and then tp somewhere here but yeah that's what i see happening on GBP, USD. If that's if, like I'm trading this in correlation to what I see on AUD USD, which is not something I'd advise people to do. Uh, that is trading correlated pairs. Um, reason why I'm also selling is because I see a possibility for a, a reversal on AU, um, on USD ZAR and on um, C, USD CHF. Right. So if you look at last week we look at we looked at AUD um USD CAD, right? And this is the first one we were expecting. If you look at this, the problem with this that we're seeing right now is the fact that we have congested price action on the zone, which means if we don't get a breakout above this level right here we're going to violate the zone and potentially drop towards the downside. So that's a common theme on most USD pairs, right? Even if you look at the dollar index, it looks like it's about to drop to fetch some orders, right? But they all counter trend trades. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope I kept it short, short and sweet. And I'll see you guys in the next video. For now, peace.